Hello guys, so if you managed to get through the previous section on mechanical energy and work easily, then power is going to be an absolute breeze. The definition of power is the following. Power is all about how fast the energy or work is done. Now that's obviously not the technical definition, that's just Kevin's definition. So think about this, let's say you've got a water pump that is busy pumping water into a swimming. Now let's say this is pump A and let's say it fills 10,000 liters of water and it takes 24 hours to do that. Then let's say your neighbor also needs to fill up his pool, his or her pool, and that's a 10,000 liter pool. They're using a different pump, which I'll call pump B, and their pump takes 16 hours. Both pools are doing the same amount of energy or work. They're both filling 10,000 liters. However, your neighbor's pump, which is pump B, takes 16 hours, whereas your pump takes 24 hours. We would therefore say that your neighbor's pump is more powerful because it can do the energy or the work much faster. So in formula terms, power is equal to the following. So power is equal to the energy or work divided by the time. In formula terms, and you do get this on your formula sheet, it's equal to W, which stands for work. But remember, that's the same as energy divided by the change in time. There is another formula for power, but I'll have to show you that in a later lesson when, I, when it will be more appropriate to do so. For now, we just think of power as the amount of work or energy divided by time. So it's very simple, because if you know how to work out the energy, which we'll typically use this formula over here, then you've got the time typically and then you can work out the power. So let's practice a bit. So here we have a question where we have a crane that is able to lift a crate of bricks, which have a mass of 100 kilograms, at a constant velocity. It lifts the bricks 40 meters high in a time of one minute. Determine the power of the motor. So we know that power is equal to, and so if we could work out the work, then we can work out the power. So work is equal to the force times by the displacement times by the cos of theta. So if we have a pile of bricks, we've got this motor that's trying to lift them upwards, and then obviously there's gravity. Now because we are moving at a constant velocity, it means that those two forces must be balanced. And so the motor will be the same as the force of gravity, which is just the mass times by 9.8. And that's going to give us 980 newtons. So then the work of the motor will be 980 times by the distance, which is 40 meters. Now the crate is busy moving up and the motor is moving up or working upwards. And so that's cos, not 180, cos zero. And so then 980 multiplied by 40 is going to give a work of 39,200 joules. So then we can say power is equal to 39,200 divided by the time. But now time must be in seconds. And so if you do that, you end up with 653.33. Now power is measured in watts. No, I'm not asking you what it's measured. I'm telling you it's measured in watts. <laughs> so that's just a silly little joke. It always catches my students. So power is measured in watts. Now something that's very interesting, and this is where the second definition of power arises, and I see them do this in exams a lot. I could have left out the distance and I could have left out the time, but I would have given you the velocity. Because have a look at the following. We know that velocity is equal to the change in the displacement over time. So I have that information. I've got 40 meters and I've got one minute. So I could say that the velocity is equal to 40 over 60, which is going to give you 2 over 3 meters per second. That is how fast the bricks are moving. We can say that for sure because it's moving at a constant velocity. It might have reached 40 meters in one minute, but it might have been moving faster and faster. So then you can't use this formula. But because it's moving at a constant velocity, we can get this answer as 2 over 3 meters per second. Okay, Kevin, so how does that help us? Because power is equal to work over time. Yes. Now have a look here. We know that work is equal to force times displacement times cos theta over the change in time. So this is meant to have a change. Now have a look here. Here we've got change in x over change in time. Here we've got change in x over change in time. Cos theta is always going to be cos zero when you're looking at a motor because it's always going to be going in the same direction of, as motion. And so we sort of ignore that because it just becomes one. And so power is equal to force times by change in x over change in time, which is just the velocity. Now, if you had a question where they didn't give you the distance or the time, 
they would have given you the velocity. And so we could have just said that the power is equal to force times by the velocity, which is 2 over 3. And the force, we said, was equal to mass times gravity. Because it's moving at a constant velocity, the force of the motor must be the same as the force of gravity. And so you would have said power is equal to the mass of the bricks, which is 100, times by 9.8, times by 2 over 3. And if you do that all on the calculator, you're going to get the same answer. 653.33. And so guys, there are two formulas on your formula sheet for power. It's this one, or you can use this one over here. And so that's it. Thanks for watching.